Catholic psychologist Dr. Conrad Barr says that in the own his own father in his own fatherhood, God provides these concrete expressions and revelations of fatherhood every day of your life, mm -hmm. right? And hopefully like the gift of the priesthood and the gift mm -hmm. of friendship and right. like all these things reveal to us the heart of the father, mm -hmm. but in our own personal prayer, in our own vocations, in our, whatever, all these, like every single day that God is, God is going to draw, God as father is going to draw you close to his heart. He is your father. That mm -hmm. is true. And that's the good news. God is your father. And so anyway, so that's just to say, to say that in, as, as a, maybe just like a, just a real concrete truth. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have to spend our life trying to make that true. Right. God is your father. And now we're gonna go on a journey so we can receive that mm -hmm. and, and encounter him. But that's just amazing that God is father no matter what we've experienced. <laughs>
Yeah, the brilliant servant, you know, he just decided. <laughs> You're new. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It's a new servant. We went a different route, quote yeah. unquote. I don't know what I'm doing. Exactly. So like, <laughs> what are we, I'm going to make it up. And then just with confidence present it, you know? And so, um, yeah, so we had three days of fraternal time and we are experiencing, yeah, just guys coming in and leaving the fraternity. And so it's just a time to be together and get to know each other. So we just shared testimonies and shared um, just our life stories so that way guys could just have an understanding of who each other are mm-hmm. and it was just really beautiful um, because we, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, you share your testimony, but then guys open up to questions and like even details that I didn't realize about certain brothers, even though you live with them, like, oh, mm-hmm. I forgot about that. So mm-hmm. it's just a nice little yeah, reminder great. of how the Lord worked in their lives. But then after that, we had a uh, fraternal life review uh, coming back to the Bronx because we couldn't have it in a nice place. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to let this go. It'll be the last time I mention it. Out. But uh, came back to the Bronx, had a little fraternal life review just to you know, talk about our fraternity. And even from that, just it was clear that the brothers just want to just continue in fraternity, but just to uh, yeah, intentionally do it. And so, especially we have a couple younger guys in the house and uh, and our older guys, my, myself included, just want to make sure it's a it's a home for them. And mm-hmm. so it's just good. And then we had our apostolic review, which is pretty extensive since we are an apostolic house. We, like the youth center is, it took maybe three hours to talk about just all different things, summer life, the programs and um, just how we could do better about that. We also had a mission statement meeting. Come which on. Was, it was super funny. You haven't um, memorized? No, oh. no, no. It's the, so the mission statement is for us yeah. to like not our this listeners. Is what we do. Yeah, <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> if we if we have a vision statement, something that's going to say this is who we are, so we're hoping to go. That'll be tweaked out from the mission statement. But um, but it's just funny because like you have these guys, all these. So I had everybody write out their own mission statement. You know, nice. this is the criteria. Write it out. So you had five different mission like in statements. general or for the youth center. For the youth center. Okay. And uh. And it was funny things like, well, one guy's like, I don't know about discipling. I don't know about like intentional. And so like, it was just a funny, funny thing of like just guys arguing over language, but like generally everything was agreed on. And so, but it is funny when, so you have different, uh, like understanding of like, this is what we do here when it's, and you look yeah. at all five and you're like, oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, they could be different. Yeah. And we did it in, um, in a classroom, arts and class classroom where there's a huge whiteboard. And so everybody wrote it out nice. and Father Seraphim, he's just this wonderful mind of able to, to synthesize stuff. And he's like, he took a step back and he started like just writing. It was like, it's just like watching an artist at nice. work or like, nice. you know, and uh, he started writing his own, like compiling everything and taking words. And it was just, yeah, it was just awesome to watch. And then That's, it's a nice to have someone on a team like yeah. that, you know? Cause then I was leading the meeting. I was like, Hey, what? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> you, know? yeah, you got it. You're doing great. You know? And so, but anyway, it's just one of those times where, much for you guys, we just have guys in and out the house right now because it's a time where we're, it's a downtime. So solitudes and just uh, home visits and stuff like that are happening. But basically next week we start um, just going at it again with Sweet. the apostolic work. So mm-hmm. did you go home yet? No, actually uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday coming up, I'll be going home. So the beginning of September, I'll be home. Nice. So I'm excited about that. Back to Long Island. Strong Island, baby. We sort of had an unofficial what's it called mission statement what was c2 personal and communal commitment to jesus christ commitment to jesus yeah. christ but i'm sure yours was pretty good too that's <laughs> i'm sorry our constitution that's... we we stick with the constitutions that give oh, us our mission statement okay, okay. that's <laughs> yeah, great that's great no you know teach its own we, yeah we stick to, to scripture tradition constitutions <laughs> I'm just but if you to... want to make up some stuff that's cool I'm just trying to shake stuff they're up, synthesized know? very well the uh, constitutions are they kind of bringing <laughs> together from all sorts of <laughs> Have you heard of them before? No. I can get you a copy. Um, <laughs> one of the funny things too, so we have like the, we have one guy who just professed vows. You have two guys, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. so they just finished novitiate. Now their first le- time in like a professed house, a normal house, right? And so it's kind of like they graduated. And uh, brother Paul Joseph, who I'm sure will be on here, who is, he's great. He's, mm-hmm. he's six, seven. He's tall. Six, seven? Yeah, something like that. Six, seven, but with a normal torso. So he can be on here. Um <laughs> <laughs> but it was he's the food dude so the guy in, in charge of the food for the house and we were hanging out last night and had this like huge thing of salsa and i opened it up and the top was like all moldy and nasty and stuff but a huge like uh, yeah very that. big and not very used and then uh i like i looked at the date and as it was um like best by april 2021 <laughs> you know so like a month and a half ago uh so i said hey hey brother paul is it cool if i just throw this out it said it was you know expired uh April, like last year. He's like, yeah, okay, cool. And then I guess I left and he's like, that's the first time I've been consulted about something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's this, awesome. It's like, yeah. a, cause in novitiate for mm-hmm. the listeners, like the, you don't, there's not much consultation. There's more oh, yeah. just, hey, do this, do that. Yeah, something similar. I sat down with <clears throat> both brother Joseph Pio and brother Francis Xavier and hello to their families. Oh, I'm sure you're listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and uh, they're doing well. They're healthy, <laughs> Good. happy, happy, happy. healthy. <laughs> yeah, they're okay. They're serving subpar, but yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm dying. Um, but I was just explaining, like, hey guys, you know, this is how permissions work, and yeah, you know, you could go to the library, check your email, whatever it is. Like, you, you, have, you don't have to ask me for those things. You could go to the store, and, and they're just like, wait, so we, we don't have to ask for those things. But yeah, no, it's okay. Like, I'm gonna trust you guys. You're grown men, and so just make responsible decisions. We can talk about stuff whenever they come up. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so just watching the. Uh, Oh, this is different. Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> We're going to dive into the episode f- full send real quick. But one just um, part of my life right now is I, I'm, I uh, use some shampoo on my facial hair this morning, oh, wow. which is not that's, something that's I typically vul- do. That's vulnerable. It changes things, which right. is not something I typically do. I'm like 95% sure I didn't actually wash it out. I probably just like <laughs> forgot because it's not something I do. So do you feel like funny? I, no, I just taste so... <laughs> Oh yeah! Constantly, every time I take a sip of something, I try to get rid you of it. You don't wash like your my beard. eyes are you don't a little. Wash your beard shampoo? Not on a regular basis. I mean, this morning. I mean, I right. tried to. I've done it every day. My for eyes the last are like fourteen years. Wait, it's bothering your eyes? <laughs> yeah, my eyes. Still, yeah, I don't know what happened. Are I'm, you allergic to the shampoo? I'm still learning uh, how to shampoo. <laughs> <I'm still learning. laughs> but it's like, yeah. anyway. So that's just part of my life. Hmm. Thanks, thanks for, for well, we for receive you that, bro. Thanks for the thanks whole for vulnerability. <laughs> thanks for my trusting eyes are like us. Singing too. I don't know what happened. Um, do you all want right, to blowing them. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not do that? <laughs> One more time. Okay, so um, here's the introduction. So again, we're we're thank you for everyone who's been donating. We're not going to ask anymore. So but, thank you. But thank you. Not, <laughs> anyone, not for a while. Um, you guys were extremely generous. So thank you for that. And. Um, Here's we're continuing through Hungry for God by Ralph Martin. If you want to follow along, Hungry for God by Ralph Martin, uh, somewhat loosely. Um, this is kind of what I would say that I, the working title or um, mission statement of this episode is. <laughs> nice, nice, <laughs> nice. There's no I in team, but but there is <laughs> ridiculous. a me in our, yeah. There's no I in team, but there is a me in our. Um, what we're talking about is I'm, the importance. I'm kind of confused. How long did it take you to come up with that? Not very long. Okay. I promise. I'm gifted, bro. I'm so gifted. Oh, I should have a podcast. Um, so it's not, the, we're talking about the importance of actually, of, of experiencing and praying um, my father, right? Because we, we all say the our father, but within that there is this, um, that can be a little bit abstract in general and sort of removed, but with the Lord and the Holy Spirit actually experiencing God's fatherhood personally. And um, Dr. Martin in, in kind of these initial chapters shares a bit of his own testimony. And he talks about at one point, just the like sort of the, um, the paradigm shifting, the trajectory shifting experience of praying and experiencing for the first time, this reality of God, not just as the, like the abstract father, but my, personal and loving father and uh so that's kind of uh, that's the theme does anyone want to begin riffing off that when you riffing brother father pt this is your do you worry I, spot do you want to check you your said. you want to check your notes you printed out father pt <laughs> <laughs> all right full disclosure i printed out my notes I, I was read it once i was like i got this i got this, this is your sweet spot. i didn't even yes. print out a copy for you because i'm like father pt's got this yeah usually for father angels <laughs> we have to print out copies i did <laughs> and for you i need to appreciate that go for it but when they're like, <clears throat> so to the point, when there is this personal identification with the father is no longer this analogous being up here, but there's a real relationship that's able to take off. And and we'll, we'll talk about this, I'm sure, but just how we realize how much he provides for us, how much he cares for us, and how much like individually in my own life, in my own personal space of my heart, he's listening and he cares and is attentive to that. And this is a beautiful thing to think about, like the God of the universe, the God who has created the stars and skies, God from the beginning who has said his word, which is his son and sends the Holy Spirit, he cares for you. Once again, it's just a pause there. That, that's, that's a real thing. But once again, it's, it's changing the hour to my, uh, cause it's my father. And you know, like sometimes you could be kind of cute about like, oh yeah, my dad or my father, you know, like whatever it is when talking about God, the father, but it's a, it's a real thing once again. And um, <clears throat> just recently having this experience, we're talking with people and a beautiful experience is being humbled and how they let me into this, but sharing some struggles. And then, you know, just ask them like, what, what do you think the father says about that? And then they go off, they pray about it and come back and like eyes open, like, like he, he answered mm-hmm. and like, I'm loved. Mm-hmm. And I said, and just realize that, you know, unfortunately right now there's stuff going on in Nicaragua with, you know, people dying and it's just like the, the churches and persecution or like 
there's a war in Ukraine and, and God has taken time. And, and I know it works differently for God than it does for us, but like God listened to you, your articulation of this hurt or whatever's going on. <clears throat> and it's real because you are his son or a daughter. And so just to, once again, it's not just this person up in the sky that's like, oh, maybe I'll throw it up there. But like, he's a father who listens attentively to his children in a real way. Yeah, bro, it's awesome. And it, I think there's so many ways that all four of us have experienced the fatherhood of God. And it's definitely our, our wheelhouse and things that we believe deeply. So there's so many ways to start off. But here's here's just kind of where my heart is that it's it's. So yeah, so we are we are made for this community. We talk about with Father, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's it's this personal relationship because because God is a person, mm -hmm. right? And we believe that God is three persons: Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we we we've all heard that we know the Trinity and things. But I love the fact we're going to zoom in here that if God is a person, that means there there's a real relationship of 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 my Father, right? And so. That's what just again. It's that's where we have to start. It gets dangerous when we make God abstract. It gets dangerous when then the Father remains like this this abstract, faraway reality where I'm not I'm not living in a real relationship of being a son or a daughter, right? So there's a real experience of life of what I'm, I'm supposed to experience as God becomes real to me, and I live I live in this relationship. But we know, and again, we've talked about this before, and this is kind of the. My, the sweet spot when it comes to John Paul II, he he quoted basically from the beginning of his pontificate and in, in his encyclicals that that the fatherhood of God has been under attack since the beginning. Right in the garden itself, you know that what's attacked is is the very essence of who God is, His Father. Right, because the the enemy, the serpent, tries to convince Adam and Eve that the Father's holding out on you. It's not he's he's not going to provide for you, and so he starts to insert these doubts and these questions on who God is. But in John, John Paul II will say, particularly as Father, the servant attacks the fatherhood of God that He's there. He he will give you everything. He will provide with it with the tree of life that, that the Father will give you everything you need. Mm -hmm. And so, John Paul II says that's what's been under attack, and so. So that's why this whole plan of salvation is put into place, that, that God sends his son, or excuse me, the father sends his son. He sends the Holy Spirit to restore the father, to, to, to restore this, this, this personal relationship of him as father, right? So when Jesus comes, that's what, I mean, all over the scriptures, it's so beautiful. Jesus has, comes to remind us who the father is. Mm -hmm. um, and that's maybe the, the last thing I'll say is that we can't understand the father without Jesus. Jesus comes to say, I, I, I and the Father are one. Those who see me see the Father. Mm. So now the Father has, again, this expression of the Holy Trinity. Jesus comes as a, and, and he, he reveals the face of the Father. He reveals, reveals the heart of the Father. He reveals the goodness of the Father, right? And so that's just the beauty of when we see Jesus, there, we, can, we can have so much confidence that all he really wants to do is just, hey, listen, I want to introduce or reintroduce or restore, heal the relationship um, you have with the, my, my, my father and your father. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was Sweet Mary Caucus quote at some point. So well, we can bring that up. Um, <clears throat> Whatever. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I got excited. Um, <laughs> I think just my initial comment here uh, and, and kind of re-echoing what Father Innocent said, I think that one of the challenges is a lot is, especially with a lot of the work we do with young people, is that we get we get self-focused and so we're just like i want to be a son but i don't know how to be a son and my sonship is wounded and i'm insecure and like like we get wrapped up uh in our own stuff which is natural and common um but i think the the gift that of what we're going to propose here today is that um to go to the, to to start with the father to start with the source and, and the goodness of the father what's the quote from the catechism that that uh after uh, after the in, uh, initial sin, all subsequent sin is a result of disobedience and a lack of trust in God's goodness. Yeah. That one. Nice one. I, I, I think every episode, I, like a couple times and I would just, I can't uh, it's all right. uh, memorize like you, but lack of trust in God's goodness, right? So we have a fundamental struggle to understand who God is, right? And so I think it's important just to recognize, yeah, we have our own stuff. And yeah, we, and that stuff is very close sometimes. That stuff is very potent sometimes. Obviously that stuff is very hurtful. That can be distracting. And, and we, we carry around the heaviness and the burden of our struggles and our sins and our histories and our stories and all of that. So uh, that, that is what it is. But I think sometimes we have this hard time knowing what to do to get out of it. 
And we, we feel like, well, I have to start here. I have to start with me when actually let's start with God. And let's start with the Father. Let's start with his goodness. Let's start with his mercy. And let's start with the truth of who he is, right? And so as the catechism always says that, also says that uh, conversion is the fundamental reorientation of our whole lives, right? And so it, it's, it's such a joy to start with the Father. Who is the Father for us? Who is the Father for our listeners? Um, and then as, as we'll understand, once we become uh, able to experience the truth of who he is, then what happens in me when I start to recognize who he tells me I am, who he shows me I am. Um, and so I think that's important. Who is the father? And, I, and, and we, can, we can start there and, and be rescued from having to start with, with our own stuff. My eyes are burning. Um, <laughs> that's my stuff. That's my stuff. Um, my father, my personal space. Um, <clears throat> one, and that's, and this, you, you kind of brought up, um, indirectly initially is one of the things that you have to wrestle with, of course, right. In the world, uh, when talking about God as father, it's just the reality of the father wound, mm. yeah, and, which is pretty, um, all over the place, you know, and there's like a fancy word for everywhere, but I'm, I'm forgetting it. Um, omnipresent not it's not omnipresent <laughs> that's a fancy word i'm I still it's prevalent prevalent nope uh another word this is a fun game let's go <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still thrown off after my victory lap of being able to quote something on demand and, your, um, and your eyes are burning and my eyes are burning <laughs> um so anyway it's it's in a lot of, it's every it's it's everywhere um and 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 dr martin does address it right like we don't want to be dismissive of the reality and, and the actual like really deep effects that it has. Um, and there, and, and there's like a, a very sort of like long week journey we can make with that. But, but fundamentally the, as far as like orientation and direction and journey goes, what, what Dr. Martin says, and I think is great. It's just like the, the response to the father wound is not to just dismiss God, right. the fatherhood of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And that, and that, um, if you will, making some of the steps, uh, towards healing is is if you like is the right struggle and um and again and and ultimately i do think like there's the fundamental good news that um like that f the father that you desire and and, mm -hmm. and the expressions of fatherhood that you desire are are actually yours in god the father mm -hmm. Can I just say something yeah. real fast? I find that really profound and I don't want to be saying something provocative, but like in, in the culture, um, the fathers have hurt people. So the, their plan is to get rid of the father rather than to renew it or redeem it. So it's, that's why you just have a lot of confusion on like what families are and what moms mm -hmm. and dads do and what the roles are and things like that. So the father hurts people or the father has control, the father has power and that's not a good thing. So let's destroy <clears throat> that rather than renew it or transform it, you know? And so I, 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 I'm, I was moved by that and I was like, whoa, go on. That, that's pretty provocative, I think. He didn't necessarily say it exactly like make the cultural connection, but mm -hmm. I think there's a temptation to dismiss masculinity or dismiss fatherhood because it hurts a lot of people. And that's true. But to, like you said, to um, not dismiss it because it, if we can renew it and transform yeah. it, mm -hmm. it can, it's, it's the path. It's Jesus, it was Je the fatherhood of God was Jesus's path, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and just... Yeah, I'm sorry. At the end of the day, like I think everybody's father, <clears throat> in some way, shape, or form, they're not perfect, right? Like earthly fathers, they're they're human. But the thing is, uh, hopefully, it's not a stumbling block for you to experience the love of the father. But once again, just recognizing the reality of sin, the reality sometimes that people make bad mistakes and bad choices. Uh, there could be very serious things that you're struggling with with your earthly father, mm -hmm. um, and just to recognize that and to give space. And then once again. Like once again, I'm sorry, it's not the father's plan for that to be a part of your life. But I do think the father still desires to speak to you, you know, if that's the reality that you're facing. And um, I just think about it, okay, Jesus, help me, like help me know your father. Like my father sucks. Or like, you know, whatever it is that's going on in your heart. Like my father hurt me in this in these mm -hmm. ways. Um, and it's just beautiful, just even your articulation of it. Like whatever you desire in your heart is available in in the father. Yeah. And so um okay, Jesus, like, just show me your father. Jesus, you said, when I see you, I see the father. I want to see the father you see. And what does your father say about me? Um, cause this is my experience, but to, to go there, um, in a real way, because the evil one wants to tell us to follow Angela's point, like, no, nah, just put that aside. 
Yeah. Like you don't, you don't need a father. Mm -hmm. You don't need him because once again, the father provides for us, the yeah. heavenly father provides for us. And maybe he wants to provide for us the answer to those, those hurts or those things that we carry, but they're found in him. Yeah. And so just once again, just doubling down on that, where just don't let the wound kind of don't live out of it. Yeah. Recognize it and take care of it. Um, and sometimes we feel disqualified, mm -hmm. right? Because of our brokenness or right. our own experience. And and my own my own spiritual director, he's a seminary formator, and he always just tells seminarians, "Yes, we want to have such a, a like we've talked just said, we want to have such a deep compassion and mercy towards guys in our own our own struggle with fatherhood." But you have a father in heaven, mm -hmm. like and you're not disqualified, or or you're not there's there's no question mark there. You have a father in heaven, right? So whatever that is, God's going to provide and reveal His heart to us, right? So. A Catholic psychologist, Dr. Conrad Barr says that in the own, his own father, his own fatherhood, God provides these concrete expressions and revelations of fatherhood every day of your life. Mm -hmm. Right. And hopefully like the gift of the priesthood and get mm -hmm. the friendship and right. like all these things reveal the, to us the heart of the father, mm -hmm. but in our own personal prayer, in our own vocations and our, whatever, all these, like every single day that God is, God is going to draw God as father is going to draw you close to his heart. He is your father. That mm -hmm. is true. And that's the good news. God is your father. And so anyway, so that's just to say, to say that and as, as a, maybe just like a, just a real concrete truth. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have to spend our life trying to make that true. Right. God is your father. And now we're going to go on a journey so we can receive that mm -hmm. and, and encounter him. But that's just amazing that God is father, no matter what we've experienced. Right. It's beautiful. And, and I think this is worthy of a quote. Uh, this is page 28. There's something deep within us that needs to rest in the secure love of the Father, and only that will satisfy. Therefore, as painful and, and as awkward as it may be, we need to open ourselves, allowing Jesus and the Spirit to show us the Father and His love. And I, I do think that that is, um, for some people, it's a, it's a consoling truth. For some people, it's like a, like the opposite, right? Just that there is something deep within us that needs to rest in the secure love of the Father, and only that will satisfy. And so, and, and I do think that is a universal. Um, part of the human heart, mm -hmm. you know? And so, so certainly it is, um, it is something that we, we, we need to pursue. We need to ask God in his mercy and his help in pursuing it, this experience of the fatherhood of God in a way, which is, um, again, not just abstract and universal. It does. We, the, the, our part of the, our father is important, right? And there's a reason Jesus taught us to pray like that, but also just, it has to be experienced, um, both communally and personally. Mm -hmm. Um, do you guys have any, any, th so it's like, okay, cool. Like I'm in for, for some people there are like, they they started all in on that. Uh, for some, if you know, they want to begin like, okay, how do we actually experience the personal fatherhood of God? What does that look like? I don't know if this is what you're looking for, but when you were speaking there, um, mm -hmm. I've been reading a book <clears throat> about addiction recently and it, it talks about, uh, the, the root of all addiction is insecurity. Right. And so, the, the reality of like, we're made for this secure, beautiful relationship and communion with the father. Right. And so when, when our hearts experience the insecurity, what we learn is behaviors that cope with, with the reality of the brokenness of, of my insecure attachment or my insecure experience of being loved or, or not seen or known or, or whatever. Right. So I think the challenge is, is that, and I think basically what we've said though, like if we want to move in the, the direction of, um, finding security in the father, like it's, it's a sobering and, and difficult, but it's, it's with the Lord and the gift of the Holy spirit. We, we probably want to open up our, our experience of our insecurities before the Lord and our insecurities of our, what leads us to not feel secure and what leads us to not feel loved and seen and known. Um, and, and that's where the healing needs to take place before we have like a practical, like, okay, I, every day I'm going to get up and I'm going to feel attached to the father. I'm going to feel secure in the father's presence. Sometimes it's not even possible till we recognize like, oh gosh, I find security so many other places or I find attachment to things that are not good for me or to people that are not good for me. Um, and so I think it initially just prayerfully opening up our hearts to the insecurities that we experience and then what we do to cope with them or what we do, um, to medicate them. Um, and then allowing the, the Lord and Jesus to transform them. And oftentimes, ob obviously, uh, to repent of them, because oftentimes we, our, our freedom is involved. We make choices for those things. 
um, and and also then to experience healing in it and let the let the Lord kind of allow us to be detached from things that aren't good for us, so we can find security in His Father. I I think I'm just going to go back to Scripture and in it's kind of the maybe the cliche gospel passage, but I think it's probably most foundational. Again, Jesus is the only one that can reveal the Father to us. And so we just can't, again, we don't do this by ourselves to this abstract idea, but Jesus, we, in our own prayer, Jesus, teach me about the father. Tell me about your own experience, right? Jesus invites us into his own experience of the father. That's the gift of baptism, right? And so we don't have to do this by ourselves. And so the, the, the scripture passages of the baptism open up for us. Again, it's predictable, but, um, what, when you ask that question, I, I just had this desire of kind of personally to say, okay, Jesus, teach me again about the moment when you open up, <clears throat> the heavens open up for you and you get to experience this anointing of the Holy Spirit, but also the Father say like, you are my beloved son in whom I delight or whom I'm, I'm, I'm well pleased, right? Because I think a big part of fatherhood and sonship and being sons and daughters is delight. Mm-hmm. Um, the Father delights in his sons and daughters. That's a, that's an, one of, the, I would say, one of the main experiences of fatherhood is delight. And we all need that. And we we all have have longed for that. And maybe there's there's just this deep pining in our hearts for that. But the Father's the only one, God the Father's the only one that can truly delight in us. Mm-hmm. And it's a scary thing. And and but will we will we take the risk to trust that Jesus wants to invite us into that? And so we can experience the Father say personally to to you and to me. Yes, like I delight in you. I love you. I love spending time with you. I love the sound of your voice. I love being with you. Mm-hmm. I love being attentive to you. Like, like we're not used to that delight where it's undeserved and unconditional. We don't have to prove ourselves, right? But that's one of the one of the most significant experiences being of sons and daughters, that we have a father who delights in us and we are beloved. Mm-hmm. And so even that, starting in a place of prayer reading the, the 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 scripture passages of the baptism of Jesus and asking Jesus to teach us and invite us into what does it mean for to, to be delighted in by the Father personally. Yeah. And I would just double up with that <clears throat> um, transfiguration. Anytime the Father speaks to the Son, um, I think there's another moment in scripture where there's, there's an audible voice. And it's just because also if you recognize it's not the father ever says, Jesus, you're trash or Jesus, I don't like you. It's, it's always words of delight. And also even more so, this is my beloved son, mm-hmm. you know? And so imagining what would that sound like if the father said it to me right now in my heart, in my life. And also too, I find it helpful just to talk to him, you know, like just to have a conversation with your dad, with, with the father, just to say, okay, father, like, what, do you, what, do you, what is your heart like for me? You know, or awesome. this situation, like, how do you see it, dad? You know, but just like re- in a really familial way, just to speak to him and just to allow him in the quietness of your heart to speak to you. Um, Cause I think if we're attentive enough and we're listening, we can just hear, Oh, it's a little bit different. Like when I'm speaking to the father in the sense of like, mm-hmm. okay, I feel secure. Not that we feel insecure when Jesus is talking to us, but, but once again, it is something where we can experience the heart of the father for us. And in, in particular in my life, in these situations, when we're able to open up our hearts to him, if we're struggling with things, if we once again, open up scriptures, but ultimately, once again, just uh, just giving a space or creating a space to hear the Father, I think is the most important thing. And and even too, like if you have had positive experiences with your father, I think oftentimes in memories where, mm-hmm. okay, like my dad, like f- small thing for me, um, bring up the beach, beach house. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how to swim. I don't know if this, I've made this confession before because growing up, I lived close to the ocean and I would walk on the beach with my dad. And I remember one day saying, hey dad, can I uh, can I jump in the water? And like, you teach me how to swim? He's like, yeah, if you jump in the water, you're gonna die. Cause I don't know how to swim. I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe I won't. <laughs> and um, anyway, he probably didn't say it like that. But, but like, so for me, just thinking back when I was whatever, 10, 11, 12 years old, I just really enjoyed walking on the beach with my dad, talking to him and just being with him. I remember just one time in prayer being moved, like, okay, father, what do you think about me? And that memory came back. And just getting the sense of the Lord, like, I just really like being with you, walking with you on the beach and talking with you, uh, but experiencing that fatherly presence that I had. Mm-hmm. And so even too, sometimes like if you have positive memories with our earthly fathers, that could open up once again, an aspect of the, the Lord's heart for us, the father's heart for us and how he desires to be with us. Because once again, earthly relationships are, are limited, very limited, but the eternal relationship is eternally open, you know? And so like we can experience once again, every good thing we want and, and desire, especially in him, even though we can experience the goodness in a limited way in our on earthly uh, relationships. And so we just had to, to your point, we just had our own home visit and we were watching a home video of us on a hike with our dad, the triplets mm-hmm. on a hike with our dad when we were eight. 
on so many levels, it was enjoyable, but it, to, to experience my dad and all that he was experienced when he was, had the video camera and we were hiking and he was falling and we were going <laughs> in the water and we were doing all these things. And it's, it, it just, as adults now, it was just like, oh gosh, that was really such a delightful experience for mm-hmm. my dad. And Cause he was of, like laughing out loud yeah. as we were like, Hey, don't get wet. And he, and mm-hmm. Andrew's like in the puddle and you're like, are you wet? He's like, no, I'm not wet. <laughs> you know, my dad's like laughing out loud. Right. It was just very beautiful. Yeah. But you, you I remember that in my, in my own prayer, like a couple weeks ago after that, um, and then taking it to spiritual direction a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. too, like something of this experience when we were eight with our father and, and then watching it again and delighting it in it again as adults. Mm-hmm. And my spiritual director is like, you just can't skip over that, right? you know, to go back to this space of, of that being a, an image or an icon, if you will, of the way the father loves us and the way the father sees us and the way the father like is, is joyfully engaged in everything that we do, you know? Right. And so it was fruitful prayer yeah. um, and something I just haven't done in a long time, mm-hmm. you know, to experience <clears> that. So I think it, it's awesome to kind of encourage right. those listening to like, well, what it, what does it mean for experiences in our life of, of the goodness of the father through our own experience of fatherhood in, in the midst of those we're in relationship with mm-hmm. to be a source of in, in encouragement or consolation or healing right. as we kind of reaccess that, mm-hmm. you know? And even to like, cause it's a real situation. Maybe your father wasn't there for you at all. Maybe he was emotionally unavailable. Maybe there wasn't like these positive memories you have of your father. And once again, it's it's horrible and I'm sorry, but at the same time you can at least, okay, father, like my dad was emotionally unavailable to me. Like speak to me about that. Like where mm-hmm. where are you and what's what's happening? But to dialogue with the father because he has something to say to you specifically about that situation. And I think in a real way, it is something where, if I begin to open up my heart, he can speak and healing can begin, you know, or difficult situations with your, with your father, or even just another father figure in your life. Um, Mm -hmm. if it's helpful to think, okay, this guy was here for me in this way, he wasn't necessarily my father, but maybe I could experience some of the father's heart in this relationship. And so, Mm -hmm. and maybe we'll, there's a funny swimming story. Maybe we'll get to next week. Not quite in that place. Uh, (laughs) What, what I'm going to ask you is eventually what we'll do is try and give the listeners some like prayer prompts on like what's, what are some questions they can ask God the Father, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, like Father PT shared the one about what is your heart like for me? Uh, something on being delight, like what's a moment you've delighted me? But we'll try and put together a little bit of a list and kind of share it towards the end. Sound mm-hmm. all right? Sounds mm-hmm. If anything comes to mind. Um, great. And, you know, it's not um, how to experience the fatherhood of God, right? It's not, um, you don't have to recreate the wheel, you know? You don't have to recreate your own mission statement, right? Like it's it's given to you. Um, ultimately, right, it is it is the radical discipleship and giving of our whole life to Jesus and allowing him to live mm-hmm. his life in us, which allows us to experience his relationship with the Father. Okay, that sounds hard. Um, <laughs> that's why there's grace. But it is. It's like, so So part of this journey is removing those things from our life, which, uh, removing sin, because sin does blind us and block us from the fullness of the experience uh, of God um, as Father. But also, and, and getting rid of those, right? Because what we've talked about, like, there, there is a real, and, and, and the invitation is to really take a risk on this and really... Um, if you will try it, there is a real way in which you can experience the personal fatherhood of God for you, his delight in you, his heart for you um, in prayer and simply by being still and asking the Lord for that experience. Like I, uh, I've, I believe probably all of us have had some degree of that experience uh, just in prayer. And so um, the precursor to that is you have to be praying. Right? Mm-hmm. And you have to be living a type of life which doesn't have constant distractions so that you can have the uh, the simplicity of heart and the the sort of focus to relate to your Lord and to to let him see you right and um, and to, or to let yourself know that he's seen you to, to mm-hmm. look, look upon him back right um, so so certainly that and then I do think that um, Again, it's but it, it's it can happen, and I think it will happen in part in personal prayer, um, but also, I think uh, like an integral part of it and a fulfillment of it is going to be actually through like particular actions and decisions and situations, right? Uh, through a particular experience of God's providence, which is going to be generally in a situation where you can't care for yourself, as He provides for you, you can experience like oh, He has provided. He is father for me and he's a provident father for me in um, 
it, what would be some other ones in our own uh, you know taking a risk on forgiving somebody you know all right lord like you're you're i trust that you're asking me to do this and that you're a father who like teaches me and guides me i'm gonna i'm gonna take a risk on forgiveness and then we experience sort of the peace and the consolation the healing of that like oh okay actually you know you are a trustworthy guide for my life or um when we experience personal forgiveness for our own sins I think that's an, like an experience of God's personal, like as a personal father who, who loves us and embraces us and um, forgives us even um, in very concrete situations, um, a concrete action of trust, all of these, all of these, right? And so, so what we have to reframe is because you might be having these situations where you do have a particular sin or where you do have a particular um, source of anxiety about the future. It's like, okay, hey, here's here's the opportunity let's like pray into it and here's an opportunity to experience the concrete fatherhood of god in in, in your life i mean i just i guess i'll just reiterate sure. but I, I love i love that the the challenge to see differently or, or to experience this conversion of of like this daily experience of being cared for by a fa our father right because there's never a time where the father's not caring for us or providing for <clears throat> us so a lot of it is just seeing again like Okay, um, what does the scripture say? Is there anything you've received that you have not been given? Mm -hmm. Right. So, just again, it's it's going to be a gratitude thing, but also the the concrete prayer to say, Father, help me notice <clears throat> in my day to day experience how you care for me. Right. Again, it's so, such a small thing, but but again, our our lives as Franciscans, I think, sharpen this for us because mm -hmm. we were like professional beggars and and we re, we we just we look lean into the divine providence like the divine provident thing is that father you're going to care for me and i'm not going to grasp myself or make my own plan or or, or take control all the time mm -hmm. i'm going to have this openness of again the, the posture of a son and daughter of okay father i want to love you and i want to be cared for by you and so i'm going to i'm going to have this open hands and open heart where mm -hmm. you can care for me and lead me and guide me right, right? but we we don't we're just not used to that and we've practiced other ways mm -hmm. of taking control and and thinking that we everything depends on us right I, I think for in our own families or you know being being a being married and, and being a mother and father is not easy mm -hmm. and in the culture we live in man it's it's hard right but but i think it it kind of encourages us to depend on ourselves and get my i have to i have to work hard and put the hours in and make enough money and, and all these different things, like the culture that breeds self-reliance. But maybe it is just like, okay, I want to, I want to take a deep breath and take a step back and be like, w there's just a different way to live mm -hmm. as Christians and as sons and daughters of such a good father that my posture needs to change. I need to start to ask and to notice, okay, I'm anxious about this and father, will you really provide here? And if I just create a little space to, to pray differently and, and, and maybe, just be more open. Can I start to experience the providence and fatherhood of God on a daily basis that he is actually attentive to me um, and I can trust in that? Right. I mean, and as Franciscans, right, we have the heritage of St. Francis. So he was in the square, right? And he was realizing just everything that he's been given has been actually provided by his heavenly father. And so, you know, his, his father comes and says, give me back everything that I own, whatever it is. And then Father Marmar, you could correct all the different mistakes here, but like he basically takes off his clothes and says, now I don't have anything. And I have my father, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And the bishop like kind of just covers him up and like whisks him away. But, but once again, I think that, um, so the physical manifestation of like, okay, just taking off everything for St. Francis could be a spiritual, I think it was also spiritual too, where yeah. like I'm naked before the Lord spiritually, like especially the father, he will provide for me knowing all my lacks and knowing all the things that I don't really do well or whatever it is, like he sees it. And even despite that, he loves me a lot, <laughs> you know? And so and that's my father, that's my dad. And so I can, I can just trust in that to help provide for me. Um, and that's what moved Francis in a radical way, just to depend on everything from the father. And, um, and yeah, that's our, that's our heritage of the friars. And I think in a real way, that's who Jesus wants us. That's how Jesus wants us to be, you know, in a real way, just depending on the love mm -hmm. of the father, just through every situation that, okay, dad, I need your help on this. Help me. And so. And it's like in every every moment we just give are given the invitation to live in reality and, and the father is the source of reality it's like that all reality flows from him right and so again the gift of saint francis it wasn't just that moment in the square why and why did he love the birds and why did he 
you know, um, have a relationship with the sun and the moon and all these things and like brother and sister and all these things. It was because God is the source of the reality of everything that's given. So we get up in the morning and we see the sun rise. The, the father is like the lifeblood or the heartbeat behind, behind that particular uh, reality of nature, the mm-hmm. sun rising, the birds chirping, all these kinds of things. And so Francis responded to the deepest form of reality, which was the father's movement and goodness and care and providence, right? And so I, I think... To, to Father Innocent's point, just like it's like the slowing down and the making my heart aware, especially with the gift of silence, like the gift of reality that comes to me at every moment, mm-hmm. right? Um, from nature all the way up to to this, our own personal mysticism, our own personal experience of God in prayer, mm-hmm. right? And so I just want to be better at that. Like God, God is the source. His fatherhood is the source of reality. So every experience of reality is just care for me. Every experience of what I experience in nature or through relationships or through seemingly... Um, random experiences on the streets to traffic, to this, to that, to sports games that I lose or from difficult conversations, everything is reality. And so therefore everything can be a gift from the father. Mm -hmm. But how how often do I receive that? How often do I recognize this? Like, oh gosh, this is the father moving and caring for me right now in my experience, what's happening in reality. And like what we talk about though, is that we're all uh, uh, escape artists. We all escape reality very well. So therefore we're not even aware of it. Therefore we're not even engaged with it. We don't see the sun beautifully as it rises. We don't see the people that need our attention on the street. And then, and we, and in more formal ways, we escape reality with video games and pornography and um, things that are in completely alternate universes. Mm-hmm. Right, and so then, if, if especially if those those major struggles are present, um, we're we're um, suffocated by those things, and so reality doesn't even appear to be something I can grasp or appear to be something I can be in relationship with, and then therefore it's difficult to experience the goodness and fatherhood of God, right? And so, it's it's yeah, it's it's powerful, but I, I think there's a there's a a beautiful invitation to to receive again the the, the gift of every moment and, and the reality that the Father mm-hmm. wants to give us. Amen. One of the uh, to to go back to something Father PT introduced, you kind of touched on, and and I think it responds and gives some hope to the beginning of our conversation. Is this is an interesting part of the life of Saint Francis and the like the Saint Francis the man that we we kind of move past pretty quickly is and for the listeners who isn't aware like so saint francis had this movement of grace and he started to follow jesus in a, in a radical way and it was embarrassing to his dad you know prim, prim, he did take some of like the stuff he was given and like give it away but primarily his dad was uh like embarrassed by it and it was kind of like because he was kind of francis kind of was like a crazy guy and and so he persecuted him and he tried to make him stop and he even tried to like imprison him and he escaped and then there's there's this whole scene where it's like, okay, you know, from now on, like, I'm going to call God my father. Like I have my one father and it's God the father, right? He's still a human being. Like we are, I imagine like, that's got to be a pretty like gaping father wound, Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? Um, And, and perhaps that something of that, I'm sure something of that was in the mix of why St. Francis pursued um, Christ and pursued experiencing God's fatherhood mm. so concretely. And, and perhaps part of that is why he was so uh, committed to like radical, radical dependence and poverty because he knew that that was his way for experiencing um, mm. and staying Beautiful. rooted in the reality of God's fatherhood again and again and again. And maybe he, he was very aware of his own tendency to doubt the goodness of, of God's fatherhood. And so he wanted this radical dependence so that he can be sustained by God in every experience. So there was no, you know, mm. room for doubt. But so, so like, again, there's the, the father question, he, you know, at least he had a father in his life, but still he aggressively like beat him and persecuted and him, and, him and, and imprisoned him, you know? Mm. So there's a lot that he was able to work through and actually was able to work through. Um, <laughs> so that's pretty good news. <laughs> Uh, okay, so one one thought that's not actually super related, but mm-hmm. I think is kind of cool, is um, the like you guys kind of share that experience of being on your home visit and watching like the tape, and and again like that's when you were eight years old, you weren't aware of the reality of like your your earthly father delighting in you, but now like when you went back and you saw the tape, mm-hmm. it's like oh okay, like you kind of receive it. Like mm-hmm. it was all, it was mm-hmm. always there, but then you received it. And I think that is similar. Like there's through, the, you know, God has, has never ceased to delight in us and to love us and to look upon us and provide for us. Um, but we're kind of, 
our, our experience or our view is like pretty little. And so we don't necessarily receive the gift. And I think p- through prayer in particular, we can kind of, even going back through the gospels, like we can like review the tape, like let's mm-hmm. watch the tape and see how, mm-hmm. even in your own life, you can mm-hmm. see like, okay, God, like, like where were you in this when I graduated high school? Like what was the movement of your heart? What you were experiencing yeah, when awesome. I was a kid playing? That could be sort of like, if you will, going through home videos with God the Father, I think could uh, be a, 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 a kind of a cool way to pray. That's powerful. I love that. All right. Um, before I give like a one last sort of direction, are we good? Yeah. This is, uh, go ahead. I just wanted to share, I was appreciate Father Angus's experience of asking for the grace to, to experience deeply and maybe even more potently the the gift of God's care every, every day. Francis had this, right? Everything became a gift. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we're just, I was reminded of a story of Father Glenn. Father Glenn's just a good father to us in our community. And, and I was on a walk with him one day and it was like the sun was setting and he looked at the sun. He's like, Hey, look what, look what my father gave me. Mm-hmm. And, and I was, I kind of laughed like, Oh, and he was like, no, really. like he, he had this profound sense of, of receiving everything from a sunset to, um, to just small things in our daily life as a gift from the Father. Mm. And I, I just love that. Like, look what my Father d- 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 is doing for me. And um, so I just think that's that's a real possibility for us all, that if we have we beg for the grace f- to see the fatherhood of God in our lives through a sunrise, a sunset, to concrete ways he loves us, I think he will show us. Um, and Father Glenn, Father Glenn's just a great mm-hmm. uh, witness of that. Are you going to co-mary caucus for us or you bet, did you back I can, off? I can bring it up at the next, at the start of the next episode. Okay, great. Um, this is, it's just a way of saying something which I found kind of moving and cool and beautiful. Um, he, this is Dr. Martin talks about how we are invited to all of the possibilities and responsibilities of sonship, mm-hmm. all of the possibilities and responsibilities of sonship. And I think that's, um, Again, we, we don't need to kind of get into it too much here, but but there is that reality, like all of the possibilities of, of sonship are ours, which is cool. I think a lot of hope and encouragement. Also, all of the responsibilities. And I think we see that in the life of Jesus. It's not like there is a, a response and a duty that comes with the gift of sonship or of his fatherhood. Anyway, that was just a truth. I think that was worth speaking. Truth bomb right there. You're good? Yep. Yeah, it's You're awesome. Good? You guys got any little like... Uh, Again, Father PT shared the one about like uh, ways to pray. Um, Father, what's your heart? Like for me, uh, do you guys have any? Or and you though he, he more stole out. that from me, I want you to. What did I? No, I'm just, I'm just oh, kidding. Okay, <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe a couple months did. ago. No, it's just like <laughs> it's like, what's Jesus' heart like for me? What's my heart like? <laughs> oh, I don't remember. I'm kidding. Okay, um, <laughs> payback for the beach house. Uh, the only thing is again, just it's full of scripture. Mm. Uh, Scripture is full of Jesus teaching us how to pray to the Father. Mm. So when you said that, a couple of things, Jesus goes away uh, countless times to go to go in the middle of the night to go be with his Father, right? So the concrete times that that are made, Jesus teaches us that this this kind of exclusivity going away from the busyness of life, mm-hmm. Jesus teaches us. So it's a it's a prompt, right, to to go away, um, and Jesus teaches us that as he in the middle mm-hmm. of the night he just goes to be with the Father. So that that. Jesus teaches us that, but also on the cross, right? In the, in the, in the thick of the greatest suffering, um, Jesus, into your hands, Father, I commend my spirit. Um, so again, that's just a, a, a scriptural prayer prompt that in, in the moments that I suffer the most, that I feel so broken and I feel so weak, into your hands, Father. It orients us. It's a prayer that can, Jesus teaches us in the crosses, in, in, in the, the deep sorrows of our lives that, that he's oriented to the father. He's teaching us how to pray. And so again, it's just using scripture. Jesus, I think just wants to, to invite us into that into your hands, father, I come in my spirit. And if we start to using, using his own words, I think it could just be very powerful and effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only thing I'd add to that is Jesus's prayer before he re- raises Lazarus from the dead. When he says, father, you hear me, you always hear me. And so that can be a very therapeutic experience too when you pray that with Jesus and you you let kind of like your heart kind of blossom and open up to the truth that like in my prayer right now, the Father hears me, you know, but it, the fact that they're Jesus' words, they, they kind of come with power and this ability to uh, have confidence in with Jesus that the Father hears me right now. So I always love doing it. Like the Father, Father, you hear me, you always hear me, mm-hmm. you know, and let that kind of settle deep in my heart. Nice. Um, it's prayer. You could pray to Jesus. You could pray to the Father. You could pray to the Holy Spirit. But um, Father, help me see what you see and feel what you feel about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just simply, Father, help me see what you see and feel what you feel about me. 
Yeah, just sitting there once again, carving out a space of silence and place of just listening once again to the Father's voice uh, in that moment, specifically what he says about you and your life. And um, yeah, um, that's about it. I mean, obviously using Jesus' words are, are the best, but. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Monsignor asked if when I was on a retreat with him like 10 years ago, one of the, the, the prompts was to ask the, the Father like a, a moment he was like, the moment he was most proud of you. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that could be, that could yeah, be for me and at the moment and in that time of prayer, that was actually very fruitful. So that could be something to go back to. Um, Want to share? Or? Yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> and I think, um, again, you know, it's, it is, I think the way we talk about relationship with Jesus in 2022 is different than 500 years ago, where there's a lot less of like, I'm a worm and I'm scum and I'm trash and all that kind of stuff. And I, right there's like, a, I think a lot of the prayer prompts that we we sh- kind of shared were like, like leaning into a, a positive sort of devotional kind of mm-hmm. experience of God and the Father. And, and but I, I think that's, if you will, the, I think each age has its probably its, its own particular illnesses. And I do think this is the the, the medicine that we need to begin mm-hmm. with in, in our kind of current time, you know? And again, before Jesus' own crucifixion and like doing hard things, he experienced the the care of his of the holy family and of his earthly family in, in Nazareth and at the, the waters of, of the Jordan and on Tabor, you know. So so the idea of leaning into the fact that you are my beloved son and whom I delight in experiencing that in a real way is gospel as well. And it's not like a sentimental piety. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Cool. All right. Um we're gonna say a prayer and then we have a lot of little shout out here. So we got a lot of mugs going on. Father Pierre Toussaint, hmm. can you give a prayer? Of course can I can. Give a prayer. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for calling us sons and daughters. We thank you for um, just your fatherhood in our life, both recognized and unrecognized. And we just pray for hearts that are attentive to your care and to your providence and to your love for us. We pray that we could hear your voice more clearly day to day in things that we see or don't see. We could experience your fatherly presence. We can experience your your heart for us. And we could experience just all the things that you desire to give to us. Father, we also just bring before you any healing that needs to happen. As far as any fathers who have hurt us, any father figures who have hurt us, anybody who should have been an image of you that didn't live that way. We pray for them and we pray once again just for that healing in our own hearts that have to happen. Father, once again, we thank you so much just for the goodness and care that you've shown for us throughout salvation history. Just pray for a deepening of the spirit once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Holy, Holy spirit. spirit. Amen. Amen. So some quick shout outs we got. Focus gave us a mug. I don't remember. I don't know who gave it to us. It's awesome. It looks like a, a DSC a support muffle. center mug. But I am a huge <laughs> fan of the aesthetic. Nice one. I used it this morning. Um, what else we got? We got Andrea, a friend of ours. We know her from, uh, I think she's at Sacred Heart still. I'm pretty sure in Sweet. Louisiana. And we have so many friends from Louisiana, just yeah. all, all of our people. So here. thank you for that. And then so what's that? We have a Milwaukee, Cream City Catholic. Our friends in Milwaukee. Did, uh, did that come with a card? It came with a card, which I don't have <laughs> right here. I'm like, let's get on my mess. notes. <laughs> but hey, it's because... Next time. Oh, it is. It's right here. It was from Michael and Alejandra. Thank you, uh, It's because Alejandra. the bricks were cream colored in Milwaukee. So it's called Cream City. So Cream City Catholic. Cream City. And uh, mine's a fun one. It's Toronto from Canada. And it's a couple or it's a, um, a mother-daughter, Francesca and Daniela. Thank you for that. And i um, big fan of that. I'm from, or my mom's from Regina, Saskatchewan. So shout out to oh, go team. Saskatchewan people. Embracing your Canadian roots. Yep. And uh, this is a fun one. This is from Mary Grace. This is from Mary Grace. There's a big big note. Um, But I like this because you couldn't like find a mug to send us. So she (laughs) she drew one. That's awesome. I really like that. Well done. Got the whole city landscape there. And that's that. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks again for all of your kindness and donations and generosity towards us, which have allowed the podcast to continue. And uh, you can watch the video at uh, spiritjuice.com. Spirit Juice's website channel. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks, friends. Thanks for coming, Father Angels. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. 
Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love, that life is short, that all will be well.